For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Alls Camping and Leisure with me, Mike. Today, uh, Chris is joining me for just giving you guys a demonstration on how to pitch up a tunnel tent. So this method we're about to use can pretty much use on any tunnel tent that you've got, whether it be regardless of brands, Van Gogh Camper, Outwell, or even you know some own brown ones. Uh, this method's probably the ideal, most easiest way to do it. Really with pole tents, you need two people to do the whole pitching process to make it basically less stress on the poles, but we'll talk you through every sort of thing as we go through it and, and really just show you how simple and easy it is to do it when you know what you're doing. So we're using the um, Camper Hailing 4 for an example. So the first thing we're obviously going to do is just open up and just spread it out and find our position where we want to use it to. So probably a good point to mention is really uh, looking at actually adding things like a a footprint carpet to go down first and just keeps the base of the sewn in ground sheet clean and dry. So for me, I think a footprint is an absolute essential item you need to use. Purely for the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna bother using one. Um, but like I said, really, if you're looking at buying something like this, it is an absolute must. So all we're gonna do really is just spread out the ground sheet. So I've got the back at the moment, so I'll take that around the back. So first thing I want to do really, because it's a fairly windy day, is just going to peg out the main four corners just so it stays nice and tight to the ground. There you go. Thank you. Drop mat. So one thing you can certainly work as as a team, ideally you want to pull against each other and I, because oh, it's sort of more rectangular shape, really you want to make sure it's lovely and square. Yeah, that'd be fine, I think. Peg going at about a 45 degree angle, just that way it's the best way to make it more secure. And yet again, when you're pulling it, pull it against there and pull it against Chris over there as well, just to get the ground sheet nice and taut. Here we go, bloke. Thank you. No problem. So the way I pitch, because the wind's coming this way, it's going to help us actually get the actual tent up. So this part of this particular one, you've actually got a, like, almost like a soap open canopy. Um, so we'll peg that out as well, just to make sure it's going to pretty much freestand as we want it to. So this tent is actually sort of brand, brand new, straight out of the bag. And you straight away you can see the wind trying to catch hold of it. So yeah, again, same sort of principle, you want to keep a rectangular sort of formation going straight down. So all I'm trying to really do is just make sure that's dead in line with my pegging points I've got there. Thank you very much. Still a 45 degree angle when putting the peg in. And Chris will do the same, but obviously pulled against that side. Now, a good little tip for me, I think, with the wind blowing this way, is I, if I open up this main door in here just to help it get it up because you've got a sewn in ground sheet one thing you will find is getting air in in and out of it if you don't have a door open it creates almost like a little vacuum and really you can't you're fighting against it to get it up so just open a door allowing a bit of air into it you can see almost it tries to pitch itself you see but because it's secured down you've got no problem about it really blowing away so what we're going to next do is get the poles all out Assemble them and then thread them through. So the joy of this particular tent is the fact that actually all of the poles are the same length. So you don't, doesn't matter which order you get them in, um, it's easy enough to do. So immediately other tents on the market which have sort of different poles for different sections like above the bedding area or the canopy area. Uh, one thing you will find is naturally um, they'll be colour coordinated in some way. So this can be done by uh, a colour in the pole or in the um, pole sleeve. There'll be a little tab with a certain colour on the side of it. So it just helps you identify which pole goes where. But like I said, with this one, we're lucky enough that all the poles are the same length. So we can just pretty much lay it out. like so. So 
So there's only four poles this model. Here we go. What we'll probably first do is start, because the wind's obviously helping to assist, we'll probably start with a canopy pole just to get air inside of it. Really, I'd personally probably like if I can to start with sort of two middle sections to give it support, then it's got a lot of less um, sort of st stress going on the front pole. But because the wind's coming from this direction, we'll probably thread that through first. Now, the trick really is to work as a team, making sure you, the pole slides through quite easily and simple. And it's just making sure it goes through dead straight, doesn't catch anywhere as well. So yeah, we'll just do a little bit, that's fine. So we'll just um, lay that down and we'll move on to the next one. So what you probably notice we're doing is threading the poles all through first. and then going ahead and putting it up eventually. By doing this, you haven't got the pre sort of curve of the tent when the pole's fully in. So it makes it easier to slide the tent through with less pressure on the poles as well. And what we're doing is when we're feeding from one side, we're just going just enough so the pole's just going to reach the eyelets on the other side. So I've got more sort of excess on this side. Make sure it's nice and straight. Beautiful. All alright your side? Yeah. Perfect. So what we'll probably do is start in the middle because obviously that's where the main amount of the material is being drawn to. Um, so Chris, you would be so kind to pop the uh, point in there. Like I said, because we did that part early with getting the air inside of it, we're not fighting against the material sort of being vacuum packed. So now that's in place, we can just carefully sort of hold the material up as we push through until we get to the pole nice and straight and I'll just pop it in the ring and pin down my side here. So now that's in, we'll probably just clip them on now. That way the pole's got some added stability and it's been clipped to the actual material as well. Moving forward the next one, yet again, because it's sort of the middle pole, you've got sort of four, one, one and two in the middle here. So again, the same sort of principle, just helping up. By doing this, what you're doing is relieving the stress happening on the poles, so you're less likely to break or fracture them. And that goes in simply there as well. I am in, yes. And then we'll go for the canopy as well. In we go. What I'll probably just do is unravel the main guy at point just here, just so we can uh, leave this all nicely pegged out. So I'll bring that forward. And last by no means least, we'll do the, uh, the back one. Yep. 
You all good? Perfect. We'll give him a go then. Clip them on. So really by just doing the main four pegging points, the tent will pretty much freestand on its own. Obviously with the extra guy rope at the front, just gives it that canopy a bit more of an extra strength. Um, now we've done that, what we first want to do is obviously guy it out to make sure it's strong enough against the wind. So like I said, all the guys are quite neatly um, tied away. So this part is a great thing to do because it means all the guy ropes don't get tangled up when you're packing it away. But can be a little bit more of a faff when you're putting it up. But then again, if it's a, a nice day like it is today, it doesn't matter too much really. So normally you can tell where the um, pegging point needs to be, where you want to position the guy by where the tag's coming forward. So you can see from this front canopy, it needs to be bracing against it and just pulls the canopy out nice and tight. And still inserting a peg about a 45 degree angle. What I'm going to do at this point is just zip this door up which I've left open for the time being. Just that way it means when we sort of truly, fully try and tension the actual tent, this part when we come to actually close the door up eventually, it's not going to be spread out too much. So you can see still a good amount of tension inside of there. I'll take out this side. So my personal rule on sort of doing guide ropes, I'll say in quite a few of the videos, is the fact that you want to think of it like you were, uh, you know, yourself. So if you're in the wind and the wind's blowing a gust, so you've got more stability, sort of your legs sort of quite close together or wide apart. So really for me, you've got more stabilities like that. So principle of it, you position your guide rope pretty much as far away as you can. Obviously with pitch sizes, it can vary. But like I said, still inserting a peg about a 45 degree angle, but creating a nice, almost like again, 45 degree angle a point is here. So you can quite easily work yourself back. But you know, two people pitching something like this, it's not very time consuming. You can go up pretty darn quickly to be fair. There are sort of notorious different methods you can look at um, with pitching something like this tunnel tent. We find this because you peg it down first just unnecessarily means the tent's in a more stable position when you're getting it up. Um, one thing to bear in mind that if you do this method, you do need two people purely just because the stress on the poles, it just by having two people alleviates the stress and you're in a more controlled situation. The other alternative way of doing this is by pegging sort of threading all the poles through first, peg the back out and then sort of in a concertina shape, lift it up and then bring it forward. Do, 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 do. So while I've been doing the guy, it's Chris has very kindly gone around and done the sort of the back and the base making sure it's all nicely pulled out. Hello, Mr. B. So, since we're pretty much done dusting now, you can see it's quite nicely up. Door looking crisp, it's all looking nice. The roof is nice and tight, and you've still got Joyzy again having the guy ropes as far as they can. You've still got loads of tension. So, one thing you will notice is the guy ropes tend to slip after a little while. So, after sort of a day or two, they tend to slip a little bit, so you've still got loads of room to tighten them up and get that extra tension back into it 
we were actually going ahead and repegging it. But in essence, clearly quite easy and simple to put up. There is also a packing video as well of this particular tent, which you can check out where we talk you through the best way to do it and managing all of the air. So check that out as well. But um, in essence, any questions, you can always contact us at Outwalls via YouTube, Facebook, or our website. So in essence, that is how you pitch a tunnel tent.